Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is just gonna be us getting ready together. Well, pretty much me getting ready and you watching me. I just wanted to do a very chill chit chat video. I know my last video was like a full face talk through tutorial, but I'll make sure that my next video is one of those short and sweet tutorials that you guys love. I don't wanna do a super long intro because this video is already gonna be a million years long, so I'm just gonna start. So before I apply primer or anything else on my face, I'm gonna apply this Dr. Brandt Needles No More Wrinkle Relaxer. This is just a sample I got in like some kind of skincare kit and basically you take a little bit of the product and apply it where you have wrinkles and I always subconsciously am raising my eyebrows like whenever I'm talking or in photos or whatever I'm always like having to consciously think to not raise my eyebrows all the time so I do have like some lines on my forehead and right here and what this cream does is it has like a cooling sensation and it kind of feels almost numbing so I think it's Essentially, it's trying to mimic like some temporary Botox action. It's really interesting. I haven't used it enough to know like how long it lasts or if it has any lasting effects. I'm pretty sure it's just like a temporary fix. I'm gonna go ahead and start with brows. I usually start my videos with my brows already done simply because it literally takes me like 10 minutes just for my brows. It's probably like the longest part of my makeup routine, but a lot of you like to see how I do my brows, so I thought I would include that in this video. So I start with my NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I feel like this is a brow product that I cannot live without. Anytime I run out of it, my brows just don't look the same. I'm just lightly start filling in my gaps. I'm gonna have a hard time chit-chatting during this part, so I'll probably speed through it. Once I've filled in the brows with the NYX Brow Pencil, I like to go in with either an eyeliner or a powder. And lately I've been using this Jessie's Girl like felt tip liner in dark brown. It has a very thin tip, so it's perfect for creating like hair-like strokes. And I like to go in on the areas where I don't have hair. It's like bald spots. So I mostly focus on the outer part of the brow. I don't really like deepening up the inner part of the brow. Sometimes I'll do like very, very light flicks to make it look like the inner corner is flared out hair. And then as you can see, it's like not a perfect straight line. So that's where concealer comes in. And as you know, I've been loving the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I just take an Essence angled brush and clean it up. And then I just finish off the brows with some brow gel. This is the Ready Set Brow from Benefit. Guys, can you tell a difference in my forehead? I feel like even when I raise it, like the way that the wrinkles go are different from my regular wrinkles. It's so weird. I kind of love this product. Okay, for primer today, I'm gonna use the Angel Veil Primer because I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation and I want something a little bit more mattifying underneath that because if I use a glowy primer underneath it, it's just too much of a greasy mess. And then I'm super excited because I'm gonna try out the Morphe sponge today. I went to our local Ulta and it had like all of the Morphe setup already, which I was shook because I live in little Boise, Idaho, and I figured we don't get a lot of the new launches right away. It takes some time, but there it was right away. It had the Jaclyn Hill palette, had some of their brushes, had some of their other palettes, had the sponge, and I just love that this brand is gonna be a lot more accessible now because that was one of the things holding me back, honestly, from like purchasing it, even though I get ColourPop all the time, so that makes no sense, but it was really cool to be able to swap all the stuff in store and also feel all the brushes. Their brushes feel very, very soft in quality. So I'm excited to try out more of their stuff. But for now, I just snagged the sponge. I heard Jaclyn Hill raving about it. So we're going to try it out. So this is the shape of it. I usually don't prefer this type of shape, but we shall see. This is the size of it dry. And then I'm going to go get it wet. And then this is the sponge damp. So it does expand and it is soft and squishy. I feel like it's a little bit more dense than the real technique sponge. So I'm going to use this flat bottom edge for my foundation and then I'm going to use the teardrop shape underneath my eyes. I feel like this part of it is a little bit too bulky for underneath the eyes. It's kind of like very rounded so I'm not sure how that's going to work but we're going to try it out. So I'm just going to dot my L'Oreal Pro Glow foundation. 
The flat surface definitely blends the area out very quickly and I feel like because it's more dense, it's giving me more coverage than some other sponges. It's definitely making the product go a long way. So that's not bad. It blended out my foundation very nicely. It looks really smooth and blended. And I'm interested to see if it'll last longer through washes since it's more like dense because I feel like the Real Techniques softer ones kind of rip easier and deteriorate faster through time. So I want to see how long this will last. Also, I forgot to mention that it retails for $6.99. For concealer today, I think I'm going to go in with my Tarte Shape Tape. I have like a love-hate relationship with this concealer. Sometimes it's just too heavy and doesn't blend that well and it still creases on me and then sometimes it'll look flawless. So I'm not really sure what the difference is on those days, but it's kind of hit and miss lately for me. So let's try out this angled side now. I don't know, it does feel like just slightly bulky. I wish this was a little bit more pointed. I mean, it blended it out fine. It's just hard to get used to not having it pointier so it can get really in that inner corner. Gonna apply some to my chin. I have a nice little friend coming out on my chin. The flat side blends super quick. I love the flat side for sure. So before that creases, I'm gonna take some of my RCMA No Color Powder, pack that on. So the sponge is not bad. It's definitely about preference. It's not as soft as a beauty blender or a Real Techniques sponge. It's a little bit more dense, but on the plus side, it doesn't soak in as much product. And it does blend out product really, really fast with this flat side for your foundation. It does kind of feel like you're punching your face because it's not as soft, but I think I like it. I think I'm just going to finish up the face before I do the eyes and lips. So I'm going to take my Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette, and I'm just taking this middle shade with an angled Wet n Wild brush. I like to apply it just just near the corner. I don't take it down very much because I bronze up my face later, but just right in that corner, just enough to like chisel it out and create a shadow. Once I've blended out the harsh part of it, then I can bring down like any excess color. So I'm not filming a Halloween look this year. I just didn't have the time. Plus I'm going as like those galaxy face, like the space face. And I know a bunch of people have already done that. I'm following other people's tutorials on how to do it so I can't really do a tutorial on it. Last year, my son was too scared to like dress up or he just didn't want to. He cried and wanted to go to bed. But this year, he's all about his costume. It's the same one from last year that he didn't end up wearing, an astronaut costume. So that's why I'm going as like space and it should be super cute. I'm excited. We never celebrated Halloween growing up, which we still, we don't really celebrate it like the scary aspect of it. I don't like scary things in general or scary movies. It's just fun to dress up. I would dress up any day of the year. But social media definitely takes the dressing up to a whole new level. Like families have to have a whole theme every year. And it's just like every year it's so much pressure to get like the cool costumes and matching photos of your whole family. It's just like Okay, I think I kind of contoured more than I meant to. This light is like blinding me so I can't see some of what I'm doing. I can't find the Milani bronzer that I was going to wear, so I'm just gonna take the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and just warm up my face a little bit. But for real, do you guys ever get the vibe that Instagram has become like a portfolio of your life? Like you're trying to sell it to people whenever someone comes to your page or something, it's like you're trying to present your life. I know I talk about like social media a lot and all of that stuff and it's always negative and I just sound like a negative Nancy, but I'm just, I'm a very nostalgic person. So I kind of miss how it was in the beginning with connections with people on a totally unrelated note. Do you guys think that Chloe and Kylie are pregnant? These are what the big events in my life consist of, guys. Kardashians being pregnant. I'm gonna go in with this Satin Coral Blush from Essence. I've seen some people put it on their nose too to like rosy up their face, so let's try that. I don't know if this is just adulthood or just working Monday through Friday or what, but it just feels like all my days blend together lately. And now it's almost November. It's almost the holidays again. I feel like it was just the holidays. And it's crazy. I want it to slow down. And I've been trying to make an effort to like be more present in my day instead of like in auto mode. And also like switch up my daily routines just so that something in the day stands out and makes it different. You know what I mean? Because I don't know. I feel like I used to be such an in-tune person and 
because I had so much time alone, like before being married and stuff like that when I was younger. And then once you get married and you have a job and you have a kid to take care of, you don't have as much time to be in your head and like get that alone time. Or even when I do get that alone time, I just waste it on my phone, which is my fault. So I'm trying to be more mindful of that, of my time, of giving myself time to like process things and really feel things because I feel like I've just been on autopilot and I don't really experience my daily life. Wow, this sponge is great for carving out the cheekbones. The density definitely plays to some advantages. So for highlight, I'm trying to switch it up again and I'm gonna use the ColourPop Highlight in Spoon. This is their Super Shock Cheek, so it's the cream formula. I don't apply this cream highlight to my nose though. I feel like it rubs off my foundation underneath. But I'm gonna go in with Stole the Show. It's like a wider highlight and it doesn't have glitter in it and I'm gonna use that just right on the tip of my nose and then a little bit on my cupid's bow and the top of my nose. I don't highlight it all the way down because I do have like a deviated septum and the bone is a lot more visible when it's highlighted, like you can see more of the bump. So I just keep it up top and I keep like this part matte and then just right here on the point. Now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. I'm gonna do like a cool tone gray monochromatic look today, inspired by Kathleen Lights. She was inspired by Natasha Denona. I just don't do cool tone looks very often and I loved the look on her. So if you've already watched her video, the look is gonna be very, very similar, but it's gonna be different products. So I'm gonna go in first with my Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean palette. And I didn't know this, but it has like a little secret compartment where you can store stuff. So that's kind of nifty but i'm gonna take this white shade matey all over the lid first next i'm gonna take the shade pirate's chest and apply that in the crease if you don't know where your crease is then you should just like look down and then slightly start looking up and then you can tell kind of where it folds in and i have a slightly hooded lid so when i look up some of it is covered so I like to go kind of above it. Next I'm gonna take this cool toned brownish gray. It's the shade Bones. And I'm also gonna be building that up in the crease. For like the outer V of my eye look, I'm gonna take this gray shade. It's Silent Mary. And then for the lid shade, I'm gonna take this eyeshadow crayon from Essence. It's in the shade She's Got the Mauve. And I'm just applying it all over the lid. This can be used as a liner or a shadow and it's waterproof and very, very long lasting and very pigmented and also super cheap and they have a bunch of these colors. Guys, my bangs have been bugging me so much. I need to like have someone around me at all times to talk me out of these spur of the moment ideas that I have with my hair for some reason. I just always get bored with it and wanna change it up. But I think that's just girls in general. So I wanna spice the lid up just a tiny bit using the Birthday Boy shadow from ColourPop. It's a very similar shade as I already have on, but it has little reflex in it. So it's gonna make it pop a little bit more. Sorry, I just realized I didn't even zoom you guys in for the eye look. Professional YouTuber. I am gonna take a tiny bit of this black shade right along the upper lash line, just on the outer corner. I want like a slight bit of dimension, but very, very diffused. For the lower lash line, I'm just gonna mix Pirate's Chest and Bones. For my inner corner and my brow bone highlight, I'm gonna use Shiver Me. And I almost never do brow bone highlights, but lately I've started doing them. To set my face, I'm gonna use the Bosha White Charcoal Mattifying Spray again. I actually really like this, especially when I'm using the L'Oreal foundation, just cause this one is a very dewy foundation and it can look greasy later on in the day. So this has been really great to pair with it. I've also been using the Bosha blotting papers that came with the giveaway and I really like them. Since I don't have oily skin, I just never really used blotting papers. And I know that you can get super affordable ones at the drugstore that work great. He's just, they smell so minty fresh, like so minty. And they work really well. They don't take off your makeup. They just like pat off any grease. So I love using it after work because I've had my makeup on for like five hours by that point, especially when I'm using the L'Oreal Pro Glow. And I just pat it on my forehead and my cheeks that get a little bit more shiny and it works wonders. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes and I'm gonna use a nude liner in my waterline. For lashes, I'm gonna use my Tarte Maneater Mascara. Haven't used this in a minute. 
For lips, I'm going to be using a ColourPop lippy stick in the shade Tootsie. I'm not going to wear a lip liner. I feel like I've been just too lazy to wear lip liners lately. And that is it. So this is my version of the recreated cool tone monochromatic look. I feel like this video was kind of boring, so I'm sorry if it was boring and not enough chit chat. Filming videos in this new place is like a whole production and process. It's not like in our old place where I could just go up to my filming area and have that privacy. Since this is in our bedroom now and like the noise in the whole house, you can hear it in here. So most of the time I have to plan ahead with like my son and my husband. So yeah, we're gonna get in the swing of things again once I get used to the setup and everything like that. And then sometimes I might just film in other areas. Once we actually like unpack fully and finish things up, we have to do some remodeling because it's an older place and they remodeled most of the stuff, but some stuff like the closet and the kitchen, we have to do like shelves and cabinets and stuff like that. Yeah, it's been a busy couple of weeks. But as promised, one of my next videos is gonna be the short and sweet voiceover tutorial, which are a lot easier to do and I can do those way more frequently. It's just harder to do the full on, full face, sit down, talk through, or chit chat type of videos. Anyways, enough of my complaining. I think I do really like this sponge. It worked super well. Even underneath the eyes, I thought it would be a little bit too bulky, but it works out. And I just love how it blends things out so well and it gives you so much more full coverage compared to a beauty blender. But yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys. If you have any requests, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what you guys are dressing up as for Halloween. I'm always curious. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. My wrinkles are coming back. I also forgot that in most Get Ready With Me videos people do their hair or their outfits. I just washed my hair and this is about as much effort as I'm gonna be putting into it today. So yeah.